So like, um, I'm sure like everybody, right? Uh, you have a, a home internet connection and you've got a home lab and uh, you wanna know what the IP address is of your, your home connection at all times, right? And so, uh, you know, in the past we've uh, used dynamic DNS providers. Uh, then somebody made some question about dynamic DNS had nothing to do with uh, automating it, but it got my, my wheels turning. And so I, I just like everybody else here, right? You have your DNS hosted somewhere. Uh, mine's hosted at, at Cloudflare. So I figured that I would uh, use the new custom integration uh, functionality in Roost to integrate with Cloudflare and build a custom, uh, a dynamic DNS uh, workflow. So I went to their documentation. Uh, I figured out how to create an API token. Um, they tell you uh, about, you know, that it needs to be a bearer token, tells you how to get it. Um, I went to my settings and I created one that has permissions to uh, look up zones and, and DNSs, DNS entries. Uh, so I went to, uh, to Roost, uh, set up a new custom integration, uh, called it Cloudflare. Uh, using their information they gave, uh, we have a host name here. Uh, their method of authentication is API key. Uh, put my API key in. Uh, put, you know, uh, I saw how they have, you know, the authentication headers. Uh, so put this in here, authorization. Uh, they use a bearer token. So I typed in bearer here. So it puts bearer in front of my uh, token, my API key. And that's all I needed. Uh, they did have a uh, test path to try. So I put this uh, tokens verify in my test action and uh, everything was green. So, you know, using their API docs, uh, first I needed to figure out how do I um, list my zones. So uh, they've got a pretty good documentation using the Swagger style uh, documentation page. So I can look and see to list my zones. It's a get request uh, to this uh, URL. They, they highlighted the endpoint uh, in bold, uh, even give some examples on how to do it with a curl request. So with that, I was able to uh, do my list zones. So taking those docu those directions, uh, remember it was a Git request, so we chose Git. The path is zones, uh, and I didn't need to provide any other parameters just to get a list of my zones. So looking at my workflow, I get my. Uh, well, we'll go back to that. Come back to that. Uh, so this gets me a zone, so I know which zone to um, update. Looking at their documentation for updating zones, I also needed to know, uh, you know, once I find my zone, uh, get all the data about it. Here's some examples of what the data looks like. Uh, figure out how to update a DNS record. So their documentation shows that zones uh, is the endpoint again, but then you have a slash in your zone identifier. Uh, then slash DNS records, and then slash identifier of the record. So I know I'm going to have to need to list my records. So uh, we go back and we find that, and it's just a get on DNS records. So uh, good stuff there. So now I know that um, I can take my workflow, um, do some error checking, make sure that I find the zone I'm looking for. Uh, always important to avoid errors, right? So don't just assume you're going to find the zone. Have a way to uh, progress if you don't. And right here, it just goes to a no op called zone not found. If this was a production style uh, automation, I may want to create a ticket or something here that says, hey, my configuration is bad. I need to do something about it. Uh, so search for our record, you know, just like I showed, you know, looking for the DNS records. So it's zone slash the zone ID slash DNS records. I got that zone ID uh, from my list zones. Uh, action. And so now I just know that need to know if I'm creating a new entry for a zone for my DNS entry or updating an existing one. Because when I looked at the documentation, uh, create is a post, it's, it's one action uh, and then if I want to modify a DNS record, uh, it's going to be, I think it's this patch, or no, the, the put to update, I think is the one I used. 
So we determine whether or not we have a DNS record. Uh, if we need to create a new one, uh, we use the create action. Uh, we give it uh, some name, a fully qualified domain name. Uh, we'll show how we get that. A type, a comment. Uh, in this case, comment is created by Roost. Uh, and then content just being the IP that we're going to put in for the data of the record. Update, same thing, except we have uh, a put instead of a post. And the data is pretty much the same, except I'm changing the comment to updated, you know, just so that I can see the difference between it being uh, created or updated. And if uh, there's no change needed, like if the existing record matches uh, what my current IP and host name are, then I don't need to do anything. So how do I make this run? Uh, I can, you know, I want to be able to run something on an endpoint somewhere that will just, uh, you know, collect its IP address and hit me up with uh, a host name and a uh, IP to use. Uh, also, I want to keep it somewhat secure, right? Because I don't want anybody just updating my DNS records. So I created a webhook trigger. Um, really, I just needed the git in this case, because uh, I'll show you how I format the data. Um, the response body left that alone. Uh, I did set up a secret key. So if you refer back, you know, while we added a new type of organization variable called secret keys. Uh, so we have a, uh, I created a, a key called, a, a variable called dynamic DNS secret. It's a type secret. Uh, so we're going to require that in this webhook in order to use it. I'm um, not going to wait for any results and setting up just for myself, all good to go. So in order to call this, uh, what I did is I just wrote a simple, I run Linux on my desktop, so I just wrote a simple shell script. Uh, this could easily be adapted to PowerShell or anything else. Um, I've got uh, the D dynamic DNS secret, which is corresponding to my secret key. So this is how I gatekeep uh, whether or not someone can update my DNS. Yes, I know that everybody can see this, but I don't care. I'm going to remove it after the call. Uh, we have our URL. So this is the trigger URL that we get from uh, configuring the trigger. So when we set up a webhook trigger, we have this URL here. Um, and then we have the domain name that we want to set. So I can just call this, uh, sure, I'll just keep a swampy coop. I don't think I've used that yet. Um, and then we're just doing a curl here, uh, getting that URL, applying the header for the secret and the header for JSON because that's what we typically use here. And so let's run this. So run that. I see a result back from, uh, from Roost. Uh, we can look and see how this thing ran. So if I look at my task results, Uh, I see that I have, you know, this was an HTML. I've got the headers. The headers actually had my IP address. So that's what I'm going to use for the IP. Um, I've got, and then I can see how it goes through and it searches for an existing record. It didn't find one. So it created a record. And now if I, I think I have, yep, I've got my, now you can see my DNS records. That's okay. Uh, we have our new record here, so Swampy Coop, and this is my home IP. Come at me, bros. Uh, and that's it. Everyone, take a screenshot. And we have a comment created by Go on YouTube. So <laughs> <laughs> time for that Roost automated DOS attack. Tim's gonna go like reset his modem six times to get a new lease, like ASAP. <laughs> if it even gives him a new lease. I'm not worried, but uh, that's it. So this is a, you know, this could be, if I were actually going to run this uh, in production, I might wrap this up in a, uh, another workflow that I run through an RMM, you know, maybe run it through one host for every site or something and get dynamic DNS for free. Cloudflare doesn't charge anything for their services. Um, I say that, I think, yeah, if, uh, or up to a certain point. I know it's, it's, uh, and it's really cheap after that. They got limits. Um, yeah, yeah, they do have limits. So, but for home use, it's uh, it's pretty much free. I use their zero trust thing and all kinds of cool stuff. So, 
it's uh that's how it works.